the interview is basically informal. We'd like to hear your candid story, basically. Not a canned sort of a deal. The elements that we'd like to record are... The ladies here. Can I do this? Sure. I don't want to be in the picture. I'm not quite ready. Okay, good. Tell us a bit about your days as a forest fire lookout down on the Columbia Gorge. Well, it was um, in the spring of uh, 1948 when uh, we had the monstrous flood in the Columbia River and uh, the city of Vanport flooded and, and it put me out of a job working in a restaurant. So I uh, was a junior, between my junior and senior year at high school, and so I went into the district fire warden's office and the gentleman's name was Mr. Ed Hasse, if I remember right, and he's a real nice guy. And I told him I wanted to go up on a lookout. And, uh, Could you speak just a little bit louder? Yeah, I told him I wanted to, to be, be on a lookout and, and he suggested that I maybe should go into the fire camp with the, with the kids up on the river up there, you know, where, the, where they made fire trails and such. And, and I didn't want to do that. Yeah, so uh, he said, how old are you? And I said, I'm 18. And uh, he said, I don't like to put anybody up there that isn't 21. But he hesitated. So I, I told him, hey, you know, I'm a farm boy. I come from the woods. And I, and, uh, you know, I would like to, to spend a summer on the lookout. And uh, it turned out that the person that he had had arranged to come up there had just backed up. And he had to have somebody, and he just didn't have anybody. And so I, I backed into it. You know. So I think about the next day, I went up and spent the summer up there. Uh, it was a wet summer. No fires. It rained. In fact, it, right after I was up there, it rained and it washed the roads out. And I didn't see another human being for six weeks. <laughs> for six weeks when I first got there. And you were 16. And, and 16. Oof. And... Uh, uh, my communication was with the, radi with the radio, and we had a telephone that connected me to the fire camp and to another lookout. Now, I was on Greenleaf Lookout, overlooking the Columbia Gorge. I could see Bonneville Dam, and uh, one day I got excited and reported the smoke from the canvas paper mill. <laughs> but uh, uh, the other person on the, uh, the other lookout was called Three Corner Rock. I couldn't see it from my lookout. Do you and, recall who was on Yes, I certainly do. His name was Kit Carson McCoy. <laughs> and and he was about as unusual a person as anyone ever met. And I talked to him at long for long hours over the phone, and he loved to talk. I was a kid, and he was an older man. And then I did hike over and spent the night with him in one of the most memorable nights of my life. Um, how they ever found that character, I don't know. He was quite a guy. He was an active member of the Ku Klux Klan, and he told me all kinds stories that that a kid my age would find interesting, you know. And we talked at long hours. And he called me up one time after we both got off the off the lookout. But uh, so your lookout time was kind of uneventful as far as lookout work was concerned. No, no fires, and uh, uh, but uh, some lightning storms, and uh, it would be interesting because you you know you ground everything, you get on the insulated stool. And then you chart the lightning strikes, and hoping that it will or would not hit the lookout, I thought, wouldn't it be neat if it did? But I was kind of scared it might, you know. It never did strike the lookout, but uh, I would record the lightning strikes and watch for uh, fires that might come as a result. I never, I never had a fire. Uh, I, when, when we first went up, you know, it was a thousand feet in elevation, climbed from the road below, and that's where the spring was. And I carried a box of groceries up there. I thought I was going to die. But it was only 4,000 feet or so. It wasn't that high up, you know. And, uh, but by the end of the summer, I could put a five-gallon pack can of water on my back and hike up there in 20 minutes. Yeah. I was in good shape. Well, you learned to and conserve I, water, though, didn't you? Uh, fortunately, there wasn't anybody else around to complain that I hadn't had a bath lately. <laughs>
grouse. So sure, I'm supposed to do that, but they were very, they were delicious, you know. <laughs> and uh, they bring my supplies in and uh, and leave them down below. And uh, the lady from the camp would bake me a pie. And and they come in the evening time, and they leave these grocers. Well, we couldn't leave them overnight. The bears would have them, and I'd have to hike down that trail and hike back up after dark you know, with my groceries. And uh, and I never did. I think I only saw somebody a couple of times. And one day the lookout started to vibrate, and I could feel somebody climbing. And there wasn't supposed to be anybody up there. And it was Ed Hossey, and he climbed up to check on me. And he never told me he was coming. <laughs> and uh, uh, you're not supposed to have firearms up there. I wasn't about to spend a summer on a lookout without firearms, you know. So, and I did have a, a 38 and a 22 rifle, and, and uh, it wasn't pointing at him when he poked his head up, but it was laying on the table right in front of me as I was reading the book. You know, I thought, you know, I, you know, it was kind of because you don't know who it is, see, you know, right there. And uh, I had some scary times uh, for. Uh, one night the uh, fog had drifted in and, and I heard a, a cloud was come in and I heard this terrible screeching noise and it reminded me of when my father used to sharpen the big saws. It was a ee ee noise and I never heard that before. And I didn't know what it was. I got up and I moved and the, the noise stopped. And uh, uh, you know, it's all glass around the lookout, you know, and, and, and then the steps were about 20 feet up, you know, just a ladder to climb up there, and with the overhanging uh, shutters, you know, and a, and a catwalk all the way around, and uh, so I laid there, and the broom handle leaning against the window stood up, and this is in the middle of the night, it's 2 o'clock in the morning, and it's, and, and there's, and it's nothing but a fog, you know, you can see the water condensing on the window panes, you know. <coughs> and I just about convinced myself that I was hallucinating, when the when the broom handle came down against the window pane like that, you know, and then it started tapping at me, you know, and I was pretty scared, you know. Anyway, I got up and I, with a 38 and a flashlight, see, my shorts, and I walk over to the window and I flick on the light and I can see these two yellow eyes looking at me, but the but the glass reflected enough light I couldn't really see what it was, you know. So I opened the door and stuck the flashlight outside, see. Now I got the light out there, you know. And there, of course, was this really big porcupine, and he was chewing on the broom handle. And when he and he took a hold of the the straw part, you know, and then he then he was chewing on it, and he was doing this. The broom handle is tapping on the window pane, tormenting me. See, well, he uh, he ate everything I had. He chewed on everything I had. I brought in everything I was movable. He ate. He chewed on everything. And um, you know, one night. Uh, I heard him rustling, you know, they, they rustle when they move, and uh, he woke me up, and he was chewing the rubber off the antenna that were, went across before it became a bare wire, you know, and this has been going on night after night, and so I, I gave up, I shot it, <laughs> next, next day I buried him, <laughs> had to get rid of that porcupine, but. How high was your tower? Only 4,000 feet plus, so was it, maybe. Was it a ground house? Or no, it was, a, it was um, 20, 20 feet in the air on, on uh, yeah, stilts. Uh, and uh, I lived in my in my lookout, whereas uh, the other one, the um, three-corner rock, he climbed up during the day, and he came down to this little dark cabin at night, and, and that's where I spent the night with, with this kid, Carson McCoy, and he, he, he was... Uh, really kind of a scary individual. Was, well, let me ask you if uh, the experience on the Forest Lookout had any long-term impression upon you. It, it wasn't a life-changing adventure, but did it kind of affect how you thought about things as you, you grew older? Um, one thing I did, uh, I, I, I did a lot of reading and I improved my, my vocabulary a lot while I was up there, but I have never I've never stopped reflecting on the on that summer on the lookout. It, it has been one of the it was one of the more interesting and exciting times of my life. And as I told you, my grandchildren just love to hear me tell the stories about uh, when I on this lookout because there were lots of adventures. You know, uh, uh, one time I uh, went down to eat the huckleberry.
huckleberries. And there was a huckleberry patch down a ways, and there was this huge deadfall, a big log across the, this trail. And so to get up a little, I got up a little momentum, jumped up on the log, and this bear had pulled the huckleberry br branches down, was eating huckleberries on the other side of this log. And I was up there windmilling my arms to keep from falling on the bear. You know? <laughs> you know? And the bear, of course, you know, he was as afraid and scared as I was, and he went one direction. And I couldn't, didn't have, I couldn't recover in time to run the other way. So he, <laughs> He was gone. And there was uh, numbers of adventures like that. One time, I I let a bear walk to me, coming down a a logging road. This is when I was hiking over to see Kit Carson McCoy, and uh, I let the bear get as the wind was blowing towards me. I let him get as close as I thought he thought he should before I let him know he was there. You know, in fact, what I did, I fired a shot in the air, and and he just about jumped out of his skin. You know. <laughs>
And I come from a huge family. I'm the youngest of 12 kids. So, uh, well, why don't we cut it here and let you have a chance to get at your lunch. And if you have something else that you think of during lunch, we'll uh, turn it back on in a minute.